Hello and welcome to the Dressing Gown Diary review show of the 2015 World Cup quarterfinals. I'm Lloyd, there's an awful lot to get through so I'll try and keep it snappy as ever. I know you like it that way. This saw epic battles on the North v South and unfortunately as the song says, for the North it's closing time. It is curtains, it is all over, thanks for coming, no need to carry on, you are done. Disappointing on so many levels. Let's start on the positive. Firstly, for those of you that follow Freddie's Flutter, your quid's in. We predicted uh, Wales plus eight and a half against South Africa in the handicap bet that would have got even money. That came in. And of course, the massive win uh, in Cardiff for Argentina paid 2.4. So for those guys that got on that, congratulations. Now let's take a moment to talk through each of the games. Let's start off with what happened at Twickenham on Saturday. I was, of course, there in an epic battle of South Africa against Wales. I also caught up with a good friend of mine, Stefan, from, uh, from Abu Dhabi. Haven't seen him in a long time. He's still the same, but perhaps got a bit more timber than he used to. But anyway, that's a side story. Uh, Wales, again, just coming up short where it really counted. Some big players put in massive performances. Win Jones, again, was strong. Warburton was epic. Bigger is surely one of the top class uh, number 10s these days. But at the end of the day, it was a moment of brilliance from South Africa that was enough to break Welsh hearts. Do I think that Wayne Barnes had a great game? Well, there's some questionable decisions and I'm not that comfortable with a lot of what he made. But, you know, there are some people out there that says he had an OK game. Unfortunately, Wales weren't good enough to break South Africa down. They had opportunities in the opening moments that they had to take. And they didn't. North could have gone over in the left-hand corner. Gethin Jenkins couldn't find a way to find Tyler Morgan on the right-hand side in the same passage of play. These things come back to haunt you like they did against uh, Australia in the, in the week before. You have to take your opportunities. South Africa had one chance to score a try, scored it. Now, however, Wales did show individual brilliance. Uh, Dan, Dan Bigger is famous for his kick and chase. And this was another example as he towered above Willy Roo, Willy Roo and found the offload. It was a moment of individual brilliance. Wales will reflect, though, that they should have and could have. And if, but, you know, it goes on and on and on. Gatland's record now is uh, played 30, lost 28 against the Southern Hemisphere. It's not good enough and there will be questions asked. He will ask himself questions. Shall I continue with the Welsh Rugby Union? He should take comfort from the fact he's got young players coming through, which offers him opportunities going forward. But certainly big questions to be asked. Moving on. New Zealand, welcome. You arrived to the World Cup in Cardiff on Saturday night and you blew it away. All the talk about how France were going to play, I had a feeling. I did actually talk to some of the members of TFL about how I thought that uh, New Zealand would literally dispatch France and so it proved. Great offloading, great ability across the park. I mean, this is the difference between North and South. Numbers, numbers mean nothing in New Zealand rugby. Every player is good enough with ball in hand and a three on two to execute it. They can fix the defender in front, still get the offload away. There are very few players, even in back play, you know, can Brad Barrett really do that? Can Jamie Roberts really do that? You run through these guys that, you know, they're big players, but you know, we're missing the point. It's all about scoring tries and it's about fixing defenders and creating space. And there are too many players in the North that can't do that. Certainly New Zealand demonstrated that with ball in hand, any team, it could be so dangerous. If you can get the ball in hand and fix players and move people along, it, it was a fabulous performance. Where France go, who the hell knows? But I'm not going to talk about that. Let's move on to uh, the second, the third game of the weekend, the second game at Cardiff. What a matchup! Ireland really thought after after winning the group that this would this would be plain sailing, and they it, they breezed through Argentina. Argentina showed up. A oh, bit between their teeth. 20 points on the board between Ireland. You know, Ireland didn't even know what had happened. They couldn't, they couldn't grab hold of the game. A silly yellow card. A penalty that hits the post for Argentina. And suddenly, from potentially being 23-3, it's 20-10. Ireland grab themselves into the game. Come within a kick, uh, hitting the post again of levelling the match. But at the end of the day, they couldn't find the gears. They had to give so much to fight back in. But Argentina are a very, very useful outfit. Their back play is very incisive. They are accurate in their passing. Again, they've got that ability to offload. The forwards make gaps, make breaks, offloads. Here we go. And suddenly, as soon as you get behind the defences, defences are strong over the world. But when you get behind them, how good is the scramble defence? It's all about getting that offload, fixing players. So Ireland were just absolutely blown away and exit. You know, I don't know how they reflect. While I reflect from a Welsh point of view, very sadly, we gave it everything. Ireland certainly gave it everything, but they came up way, way short. Hey, you know, missing Johnny Sexton, clearly, and Paul O'Connell. The final game of the weekend produced the most contro controversy as well. Scotland, 
stepped up in a way that no one anticipated. They threw the ball around. They were they were aggressive. They they had a crack. They basically had a crack. Australia scored five tries. Scotland scored three. It, it was a matchup of epic proportions, and Scotland gave it everything. Now, where do I fit on Craig Joubert? I've got a few points that I want to talk about that. The firstly, I don't think Sean Maitland's was yellow card. He tried to catch that, and if he had, he'd been under the sticks for seven points. It's a penalty, it certainly is, but he was trying to catch the ball. The second one, in the build-up to the fateful uh, penalty call... Stuart Hogg was taken out by Drew Mitchell late. Now, it came up on the big screen in the stadium as the line-out was about to be taken. It was being formed. The TMO, the lino, can all get involved and say, I think there might be foul play. We should review this. Now, if they'd reviewed that and determined, as they would have done, that it was a penalty, it's not a penalty at the point that Stuart Hogg kicks the ball. It's a kick-kick penalty. So the penalty is actually where the ball landed, which is miles down the park. And do you know what that would have meant? It would have meant Greg Laidlaw would have had a shot at closing this game out because it could have put a four-point lead on the board. If nothing else, it runs the clock down. It's a 22 dropout. So uh, the, the, at the end of the day, Craig Bear made a call in, in, in muddled conditions of whether it was a penalty or not. All Scotland had to do was win the line out. So it's difficult to hear moaning about, wow, it's a wrong call. If you'd won the line out, that would never have happened. Throwing to the back in rainy conditions was a poor decision. But Craig Bear could he have made the right call? Could he have made the wrong call? He couldn't go to the TMO and the current legislation. What he should have done is probably given a, you know, he should have given a scrum to Australia. It was a knock on to uh, uh, from Scotland first off. From that point, you move forward. Would 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 Australia have scored? Well, well, we'll never know. But certainly, Scotland have every right to feel robbed, and it's not that just that decision, as I've highlighted earlier. For those of you that follow Freddie's flutter, I really do hope you got on. As I said previously, there were big wins. You know, I predicted that, uh, Wales at eight and a half. It makes up for the loss of the match just about, and I also predicted Argentina to beat Ireland. So those on their own would have got a four and a half uh, return. I, I tried to get uh, get money on all of the uh, quarterfinals and didn't manage it on the train to Twickenham, but still. We move on. There'll be a preview show of the semi-finals coming up later in the week, but uh, for now, over and out.